Are yes, there people let's already in here? Yep, let's start. Oh, okay. Hello. <laughs> I feel like there's only one person in here. Is it Hada? <laughs> Everybody else is our team. Yeah, okay, I guess I it's a. I will pretend like I'm a I'm an audience. Okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, okay, well, it'll be a one-on-one -on -one session with Hada. You can ask me anything. Thank you. Okay, welcome guys. Uh, today, we're gonna have a little Mint Club session. Um, Hada, have you heard of Mint Club? Oh yeah, I heard about it, but I don't know what it is. What is it? Oh, well, Mint Club is a token um, and NFT like creating tool, which is um, really easy to use and super flexible because it's built on top of bonding curve. So you don't need LP to start bootstrap your project, I guess. Okay. So mid club SDK, save time, shit and ship quickly. So during this presentation, like have this link open sdk.mint.club. Uh, this is the documentation you're going to need to, uh, create mint club projects. Uh, it's pretty well documented. Just look around, there are a bunch of recipes and like how to use the SDK. But, um, yeah, you have to shit. So toilet's the best place to think, right? <laughs> okay, so why should you use mint club? Oh, there's a crowd, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, okay, why, why use mint club? Well, there are four good reasons that I can think on top of my head. The so first is it's battle tested. Uh, it's fully audited uh, by the community and by Certic as well. And there are around 30,000 tokens created already, including NFTs. Um, so that's one. Number two is you guys are probably familiar with the concept of bonding curves now because there are so many different bonding curve projects like far cards, like even Moxie fan tokens are bonding curves. Uh, recently, Hamcaster launched and it's also bonding curve. So a lot of different projects are using bonding curve and I guess that's the new trend. Maybe we started the trend, I don't know. But um, by using bonding curve, you don't need to provide any LP like in the um, exchanges like Uniswap or anything. So whenever people trade tokens, the LP naturally forms. So that's another reason. A third reason is it's pretty simple to use. You can use the web interface uh, let me show you really quick. So you can use the website to actually create tokens on here. Uh, we support a bunch of chains. Let me show you really quick. Um, and you can also customize like the curve really flexibly. Um, so it's kind of different from regular like bonding curve projects because it's actually stepped bonding curve. You guys will see it in the create interface, but we kind of implemented this to prevent like front running from happening too much for uh, project creators. So you can choose different curve types, uh, etc. But it's really simple to use. That's all you have to configure, like name, symbol, and this curve that you want to use. And that's not, that's actually also supported in the SDK. So most of you guys are probably developers, right? Doing this hackathon. Uh, if you use the SDK, you can like launch a token within 10, like 10 lines of code, like five lines of code. So check it out. And like I said, it's really customizable, different chains. Um, you can customize the curves uh, really like on a granular level. So I don't know if you guys all know about FAR cards. Um, but if you do good, if you don't, I'll explain it to you. So like, it's a side project that I'm doing with friends and basically every user on WordCast is a collectible card. And the reason why I put this in this slide is that using the Mint Club SDK, I was able to build this project in two days. I think we, are, we already have around 30,000 users like using this project and because we, you guys are doing on a social fight track, right? Um, I think Far Cards is a great example to kind of benchmark. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is that 
using Mint Club SDK, you can actually launch a full like pledge like project, like Fire Cards, and like Hamcaster too. Uh, so if you don't know what these projects are, I recommend you to check it out before you start your project. Um, check out Fire Cards, check out Hamcaster, check out. You can even check out Moxie, I guess, because it's also bonding curve. Um, but yeah. So there are a bunch of different social five projects that are using the concept of bonding curve. Um, okay. And to tell you more about the stack that was used behind far cards, I think it would be helpful because to build a social five, you kind of have to pull like different social data, et cetera. Right. Um, so basically this is a stack that's running far cards. First is frog. I don't know if the people uh, after this session will cover like how to build frames, but I used Frog. Uh, it's a frame framework that you can use to quickly build frames. And second SDK I used was Nanar. Uh, it's used to like validate frame actions and pull like useful information from like Farcaster Hub, like with with few lines of code. Um, and I also used Dune to calculate like the social score of each user. Um, that's what kind of evaluates like the score of a user. And maybe you guys can also utilize that data like onto the cards or like onto any project that you guys are going to build. And last of all, and most importantly, uh, I use the Mint Club SDK to like actually bring all this together and make it into a tradable asset, right? So yeah, this is a text that kind of simple, but Pretty, pretty powerful, yeah. Um, before moving on, I think these are some good tips to know if you're gonna use the Mint Club SDK. So like we've actually hosted like a couple of hackathons before too. And one of the questions that most people had was like uh, creating tokens with the same symbol. Actually, that's not allowed on the Mint Club protocol, like protocol, like the contracts kind of block that. So on each chain, there can be only one symbol per token. So for example, like on the base chain, if you're going to create a token called ABC, there can be only one ABC token on base chain for Mint Club. I hope that makes sense. So if you were to create another ABC token, you would have to choose a different symbol like ABC1 or ABC2. Um, there's also a creation fee. Uh, I, I don't know if the team is going to... Um, reimburse it or not, but you, before you guys actually launch the token, use testnets uh, to like in your development environment. Uh, we support base Apolia. We also support mainnet Apolia. I think we also support Kaya. I'm not entirely sure, but it should be in the docs and in the SDK. So check that out. Um, and the SDK docs, I'm sorry, but it's like very slightly outdated. I really wanted to update it today, but like I was like thinking about should I update the docs or actually create working examples for you guys to use? And I just went with creating the examples. So these are some of the examples that I created. It's really simple, but the first example is called based QR. So I made a mint frame which turns your Warpcast account into a QR code that you can scan. And using the Mint Club SDK, it's going to mint this uh, QR code into an NFT. So I'll show you guys. Maybe it's better to show you guys. Oops. Base QR first of all. And I was assuming most of you guys will probably use Versal. So I made the tech stack Versal like if you want to deploy it. So if you click it, you get your own QR code. If you scan it, it's going to go to your WordPress account. And if you click on Mint, it's going to actually mint a base QR code for me. So the source code for this is in this slide. Maybe I can give you guys this slide link in the group chat. Let me know if you can access that, but that's, yeah, this is a first example that I created, if you guys want to use it. Um, and the second example that I made 
is a web example that you can use in a uh, Next.js. So in this example, it's a very simple, like minimal code that you can use to uh, connect your wallet using Rainbow Kit. And you can actually purchase Mint Club tokens um, in this example. So in this example, we're buying chicken token on base network. Um, but yeah, you guys can probably work on top of this example to create create tokens and buy sell tokens. So yeah, check this out as well. And here's our group chat. If you guys want to ask anything uh, during the hackathon, I'll be pretty active on there to answer any questions. So yeah, that's that. That's the end of the PowerPoint. But to give you guys a general walkthrough of how the SDK works, I think if you guys are going to read the documentation, the most important page you want to read is start here. Okay. Start here tells you like how this SDK was designed. Um, basically, this is probably the only import you're going to need to use the SDK. Um, import it. And if you do mintclub.network, you always want to choose the network first. Um, it has these all these good juicy options that you can choose from. Um, you guys are, yeah, you know, so choose the network. You can also pass a chain ID instead of the string. Then the second most important is choosing token or NFT. So like I said, symbols are unique, right? So we can actually derive token addresses from the symbol. So you can actually use the symbol um, or the token address if you want. So, so first network, second token, right? Or NFT and put in the symbol. And then there's a function that you can call so you can um, get prices, get the curve detail, get decimals, all that good stuff. Um, but if you guys are going to use it, use the SDK in the web environment, I really, really strongly recommend you to check out the code for this web example. Sorry, this is, this web example has the latest implementation, like in the example code. And if you guys are going to use it in a frame, make sure to check, uh, check the frame example. Yeah. But I think that's about it. There are different recipes in here too. If you guys want to take a look and yeah, it should be pretty straightforward. <clears throat> Do you guys have any questions? Um, could you explain a little bit about like how to, uh, like input the, uh, bonding curve data with SDK? Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe I can show you guys the code. Uh, uh, actually, let me show you the documentation. So let's say we want to create a token, right? The SDK works this way. So all you really need to provide is the name of the token, the base asset you're going to use to mint this token. So let's say the chicken coin. If I wanted to use WETH to mint chicken, like create a token that's mintable with WETH, you would actually put WETH uh, token address here. And then third, you put um, curve data. Um, hold on. Where's the curve data? All right, here, curve data. So I think before using the SDK, using the Mint Club website will really kind of clear up like how you're going to use the SDK because basically SDK is like a code version of the website. So like I showed you before, you can choose different curve types, choose different curves, like step sizes, choose the starting price, ending price, like even like creator free minting. If you want to like add some supply, like in the beginning, but basically the SDK accepts the same information. So you choose the curve type, the step count, supply, like the starting price, ending price, and how much you're going to get. And yeah, so before you tackle the SDK, try using the website. It should be really helpful. Uh, when, when I put just the, the data, so the, the, the curve, like, is automatically plotting, like, 
or do I have to put all the data between those like a range information like for example from so yeah so there are two ways you can provide the step data so if you provide a curve data it'll be automatically calculated for you just like the website so like if I change one variable, all the other ones are kind of like automatically created, right? So if you use a curve data, we do that for you. But if you want to really fine tune your step data, you can actually pass a step data parameter instead. And in the step data, you actually have to manually plot the graph yourself. Um, just make sure that the range two is always increasing and the price is always increasing because we don't support like decreasing curve token. I don't know if you're ever going to need that, but but yeah, if you really want to fine tune your step data, you can do it this way. If you don't really care about it, um, just you want a general sense of the curve, you can use the curve data parameter. Does that answer your question? Yeah, perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, what about the, uh, the creator royalty uh, parameters? Ah, okay. So, so there's a parameter called buy royalty and sell royalty. Uh, if you set these, um, whenever the token is created, the creator actually receives a percentage of that um, trading fee. So let's say the, the buy royalty is uh, 10% and somebody trades one ETH amount, you would get 0 0.1 per one ETH out of that transaction. Maybe less because there's also a protocol fee. So... Yeah, but that's how the buy royalty and the sell royalty works. That should be also um, denoted in the documentation. Awesome. I think the time's up. So yeah, can you wrap up? Yeah, I think the time's up. So if you guys have any questions, make sure to join this group chat and ask your questions there. I'll be more than ha happy to help you guys out. So yeah. Also, we're going to be guys. we're going to be in the Telegram chat too. So uh, just uh tag uh, project seven or undefined uh, any mint club team you can see you can just tag and ask any questions in telegram too thank you yeah guys, don't drink too much red bull get some sleep <laughs> good luck bye bye good luck bye